Hello and welcome to the lesson about assessment and evaluation. As we know, assessment and evaluation have different meanings. The first is the systematic process to measure knowledge, skills and attitudes in order to improve the students or group's path during the learning process. The second focuses on giving a qualitative judgment on what people have learned. However, both offer the opportunity to give and receive feedback on the process of working together to reach a common goal in a collaborative learning environment. Of course, there are different ways of assessing and evaluating students' learning. Let's look at some of them. Assessing students' or groups' prior knowledge is the first step to consider before creating a collaborative learning environment. By doing so, it would become easier to design better work plans and strategies. Moreover, it makes it possible to understand the diversity of backgrounds in the working group. This will also be useful to create a bridge between the previous knowledge and the new one. Some strategies would be make a list with statements related to the topic of the course or project, including myths and misconceptions about the theme. Then mark each statement as true or false and discuss them with the group. Creating a series of multiple choice questions by using Google Forms, for example, prepare two or three open questions and see how the group responds to them and then start a discussion to share knowledge and clear doubts. Peer assessment or peer review provides a structured learning process for students of people involved in a group project. It helps them develop skills to assess and provide constructive feedback to others. Peer assessment empowers people to take responsibility for their own learning, enables them to learn how to give constructive feedback as a lifelong learning process motivates them to engage more deeply in the project. Of course, the teacher's role would be to divide people into smaller groups and to provide the criteria to be followed in the assessment process. Self-assessment activities can help people to be realistic and concrete in making a critique of their own performance and therefore understand how to improve their own work. It promotes the skills of being reflective about our own work and being responsible self-monitoring. It also promotes academic integrity in the learning process and develops self-directed learning. Moreover, it increases people's motivation and helps them construct a range of personal and transferable skills. Measuring student learning, it is always useful to determine whether students or group participants are indeed learning what you intended or have reached the common ground in the collaborative environment. To measure the level of acquired knowledge, there are both direct and indirect strategies that could be used. Direct measures may include reports, essays, quizzes, research projects, case study analysis, and rubrics for oral and other performances. Examples of indirect measures include student surveys through the process of learning, weekly meeting, final surveys for the environment evaluations, and also to ask for suggestions to implement the general workflow. Measuring students' learning is often characterized as summative or formative. Summative assessments reveal what people in the group have learned at the end of the course or project. Standard methods used to evaluate students' performance are tests, quizzes, and other graded course activities. Within a course, a summative assessment includes a system for calculating individual students' grades and gives a final evaluation for the achieved goal. Formative assessment are any input and guiding feedback that students receive on their relative performance, this would help them to understand how to improve their own learning process. They can be provided face to face or with written comments on assignment during a meeting group or through rubrics. 
Rubrics are scoring guides that assess and articulate specific expectations on an assignment. They help everyone to understand the components of the assignments to become more aware of each own learning process and progress and give the chance to improve work with detailed feedback. For these reasons, they create faster and more consistent grading systems, both for you, your students and your working group. And you? What kind of assessments have you used in your course? Have you ever used any form of assessment in working and research groups? If so, which one? Would you use rubrics as structured assessment within a research project to evaluate the progress of the group? And this is it. Thank you.